Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Holy Spirit, the guide of the true children of God, may He also come to lead you, to guide you, and to make you understand, see, comprehend His will for your life. By the way, that's what we'd like to speak to you about today. When we read that glorious promise from the Lord Jesus before he, he went back to his throne and be next to his Father in heaven, before he ascended into heaven, then he said to his disciples, his disciples, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He will come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You know this verse, don't you? You perhaps read it several times. But I would like you to understand the following. Usually, when we read this text, people get very excited to have the Holy Spirit so they can have what? The power of the Holy Spirit inside of them. And indeed, it's true. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, they receive power from the Holy Spirit, God's power within them. They have the power of God within them. However, this power is not to just, and I say just, with the understanding, I, I know that this power is not just for you to perform miracles, healing, cast out demons, and perform signs here on earth. This power from the Holy Spirit, above all things, is for us to become witnesses witnesses of Jesus here on earth and to be witnesses of Jesus here on earth. It's not just to see or perform miracles that He commanded us to perform. No, to be witness of Jesus here on earth is when you and I each of us have a behavior before the unbelievers, before the atheists, before the idolaters, before this filthy, dirty world. God wants us to have a behavior in such a way that He, God, will be sanctified in our lives. What does it mean to be sanctified? What does it mean you sanctifying God's name? It's for you with your character, with dignity, with your word of truth, with your sincere heart, your sincere life. You are that person that your word is yes, yes, no, no. You are determined, you are positive. A person that is not half here, half there, half clay, half brick. No, you are defined. It's yes or no. So God wants to be sanctified in your life when you manifest the character of God here in this world. Your loved ones, your family members, your neighbors, your colleagues, 
your friends, everyone who is around you, who is your neighbor, they will see that Jesus is alive. They will verify that Jesus is alive in your life through your ethical, righteous, correct behavior. You are truthful. You are honest. Your word is honorable. You honor your word. You pledged your word. Therefore, you honor your word. That's it. That's it. So, Pay attention. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, He doesn't just come to make us manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are nine. Deliverance, healing, miracles, signs, wonders, prophecies, and so on. No, it's not just about that. Above all, that we may bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which means that we will show the fruit that our life bears. Isn't it what Jesus said? That you shall know a tree by its fruit. Isn't it? So those who have the Holy Spirit, they have God's character. They live an intelligent faith, a rational faith, a supernatural faith that has nothing to do with feelings and emotions. It has to do with a good behavior. He's a good husband, she's a good wife, a good mother, a good father, a good daughter, a good son, and so on. I mean, they are someone in whom the parents rejoice over. They are honored because of the behavior of their children. And that's what God wants from us. He wants to be sanctified through our lives so that the world may see through us that He exists. God is a spirit. God is a spirit, and therefore, you cannot see Him, touch Him, feel Him. However, your behavior, when you have the Holy Spirit, your behavior is different from the behavior of the people of this world. For example, people in the world base their life on good luck, isn't it? How many people base their life on luck? Oh, what's the lucky number for me today? Which item of clothing should I wear today for good luck? And so on. And people are basing their life on the spirit of this world. But those who have the Holy Spirit, they have the character of God. And they sanctify His name. You can notice, for example, just as an example here, the Bible says, the Bible teaches that Moses, when he did not sanctify God's name before the children of Israel, there when he touched the rock twice because he, he wanted water to come out of the rock. He didn't sanctify God's name. So God didn't accept that insult. He didn't accept that Moses had profaned, we can even say it this way, his name, because Moses had to obey, he had to do exactly as, as God had commanded, and Moses didn't do it. He went beyond what, what he should have done. So God said, because of that, you are not entering the promised land. You will see it, but you are not going to enter it. So, it's not that Moses wasn't saved. No, don't think that. He was saved, of course. Of course he was. However, 
God's name was profaned in that moment, in that instant of outrage that Moses had. And he didn't allow Moses to enter the promised land. Now, you can verify how God works. He doesn't give us the Holy Spirit so that we will just live our lives in, in a way that will satisfy our ego, our heart, our desires and personal dreams and projects. No, the Holy Spirit comes in order for us to have the power of God inside of us, for us to have a behavior, a character according to God's. And this will sanctify His name. People may not even believe in His word. They may not believe in the preaching that the true servants of God preach, but they see in them living witnesses that Jesus is alive. Did you understand, dear friend? God is a spirit. And how can He reveal Himself to the world? It's through his children, through his children that have a behavior, a character, according to his son, the way he, Jesus behaved here on earth. Jesus is the example, the perfect example of a child of God. And he was always compassive, merciful, understanding towards everyone who suffered, even though they were sinners, even though they sinned. For example, you can see in the Bible that Jesus had a different reaction towards the people who were sincere. For example, when they brought to Jesus a woman who was caught in adultery, Jesus, what did he do? He forgave her. And he said, neither do I condemn you. Neither do I condemn you. If they, who are sinners, didn't condemn you, then neither will I condemn you. Go and sin no more. With the Samaritan woman, Jesus did the same thing. Same thing. She had had five husbands and the one she had at the time wasn't her husband. Jesus didn't condemn her. Jesus saved her. And through her, he saved the city of Samaria. To the paralytic there, in, he was waiting there for the waters to be stirred up so he could go in. Jesus healed him. There were many sick people there, but Jesus only healed one who was that paralytic man that was there for 38 years in that situation. Jesus healed him. This means that Jesus was always very helpful, compassive, benevolent, good, charitable. Jesus was always very understanding towards all the sinners. For example, Nicodemus himself, one of the rulers of the Jew, a noble man, very intelligent and capable, extremely religious, but Jesus was patient with him and said to him, look, Nicodemus, in other words, he said, pay attention, it's, it's pointless for you to be a ruler of Judaism and know the Torah, the Holy Scriptures well. It's pointless. If you are not born again, you have to be born again and born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you are not going to enter the kingdom of heaven, which means that Jesus spoke the truth, even though he had seen in Nicodemus a religious man, but sincere, but he was straight to the point. With Zacchaeus wasn't different. Zacchaeus was the chief of the tax collectors. Tax collectors to Caesar and Rome, they would steal 
part of the taxes they would get, they would keep for themselves. Zacchaeus was a chief of them. But when Jesus went to the house of Zacchaeus, that Jesus invited himself to go there. And Zacchaeus said, Lord, I decide to give half of my possessions to the poor and if I have defrauded or robbed anybody, I will restore to them fourfold. And Jesus said, Today there has been salvation in this house. So Jesus sat with sinners, ate with them. However, on the other side of the coin, when he was dealing with the Pharisees and the scribes, the hypocrites, religious men, Jesus was very harsh. Jesus said to them, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Woe to you! And he said, Serpent, brood of vipers, how can you escape the eternal condemnation? How will you escape condemnation from hell? So Jesus determined there. He didn't come to judge. But when he was faced with the hypocrites, the religious hypocrites, then he determined there is no solution for you anymore. I am not going to waste my time on you. Because you are a brood of vipers, like a brood of vipers. Therefore, dear friend, you can notice that when a person has the Holy Spirit, they are, let's say, flexible. They are tolerant towards people, not towards their sins. They are tolerant towards those who live in sin and they live in sin because obviously they don't have the Spirit of God. So, these people, Jesus sends us to them. He sanctifies us. He gives us His Spirit. He gives us the Spirit of sanctification so that we can testify with our behavior, with our lives, that Jesus transforms and He can transform the sinners as well. Now, when it comes to the religious ones who are hypocrites, then Jesus had no consideration at all. Let's say, He was not tolerant. He he put his finger on their wound several times, several times he said, Woe to you, woe to you, woe to you. Read there in Matthew 23 and you are going to see that. So the question is, which group of people are you in? Which group do you belong to? Are you amongst those who are religious, hypocrites, Pharisees, who preach one thing and do another? Speak of Jesus to others, prophesy concerning Jesus to other people, heal the sick, deliver those who are oppressed, but their behavior at home, their behavior at work looks as though worse than the behavior of the unbelievers. Not because you simply drink or smoke. No. This is the least. Worst of all is your character. That's where, dear friend, if you do not convert, if you do not change your mindset, if you do not have the Spirit of God, if you don't receive the Holy Spirit, you are going to be condemned. Just like the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, that Jesus mentions there in Matthew 23. Did you understand? 
So God does not see what we, let's say, we do. He sees who we are. He sees our, our character, our conduct. So it's not because you are not of a church, you don't belong to any church, you live your life. Perhaps you are an unchurched person, whatever is the case, and God sees what's inside of you. If you are someone who is sincere, who wants the truth, you are thirsty for truth, for righteousness, not your own righteousness, but God's righteousness, you are thirsty, then God obviously gives you a chance to change and this campaign of Israel that we are having now alongside the fast of Daniel that starts today at midnight is for that specific reason to lead those who are interested those who aren't indeed to sanctify the name of the Lord Jesus here on earth then these people you have condition to do so because only the Holy Spirit gives us condition to sanctify His name here on earth. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no condition. Without the Holy Spirit, people will profane God's name here on earth. Either you will sanctify or we will profane God's name. If you have the Holy Spirit, for sure, you are going to sanctify God's name wherever you are. You will be a living witness of Jesus here on earth. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul said there that he who doesn't have the Spirit of Christ is not his. It's written. So, go after it. Make the sacrifice necessary because deep down we are talking about the salvation of your soul. Because when you are a witness of the Lord Jesus here on earth, indeed, not because of what Jesus did in your life. He healed you, delivered you, performed a miracle. We are posting many testimonies, many miracles here. A, a, a true flood of miracles that Jesus is performing. But it doesn't necessarily mean that all these people will be saved. But those who have the power of the Holy Spirit in order to make them witnesses of Jesus, those who have the Spirit of God naturally produce the fruit and you know, we know, when you see a fruitful tree, for example, when you see a mango tree full of mangoes, right? How does a mango tree bear so much mangoes? Does it twist and, and squeezes itself to bear a few mangoes? No, it naturally bears mangoes because it's a mango tree. Same thing with a guava tree. It bears guava because it's a guava tree. The pineapple and, and all sorts of fruit because they have their, their essence. They were created for that. So they produce what they were created or called for. They are playing their role. So those who have the Spirit of God, those who are of God, naturally bear fruit. Naturally. They don't have to show that to anybody. They don't have to show. A guava tree, a banana tree, a mango tree, they don't have to try and say, oh, look at me, I'm this or that. No, they simply bear fruit. And so are those who are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. They bear fruit and they sanctify God's name here on earth. That's why Jesus said in the prayer, he teaches us, first request, hallowed be your name, O Father. Hallowed be your name. 
Do you understand, dear friend? Do not worry about the gift. Worry about the fruit. Worry about the character. And that is only possible through the Holy Spirit. Now, to heal or to be healed, anyone can do that. Like the ten leprous men, for example. Ten of them were healed, but only one was left. Isn't it? Very well. That is an intelligent and rational type of faith. A faith that makes us inherit the kingdom of heaven. May God bless you all. And don't forget that from midnight today, the fast of Daniel, to those who want, no one is being forced. Nobody, absolutely nobody. We are not imposing anything. We are blowing the trumpets as Gideon did. And those who want will gather together to him. And that's it. And even amongst those who gathered to him, God only chose 300. Out of thousands, only 300. Actually, 32,000 men out of them all, only 300 were chosen by God himself in order to be part of the army of Gideon. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.